Okay, so yeah, it's been a little while, probably two weeks or so. Um, I had to kind of halt on the stove remodel because I had other work that came up. Um, I've been posting pictures of it on Facebook, so uh, it's just business-wise. Um, I had to make a, a spice cabinet slash spice rack, um, so it's been taking quite a bit of my time. It was a big project, but now I'm back onto the stove. So um, where we are now... Um, I'm in the process of painting the wall, which is not really all that spectacular. Um, but more importantly, I'm about to make the mantelpiece for the, well, mantel behind the stove. I've got a piece of leftover plank here from when I milled all of the material for the shop. When I built the shop, I milled a bunch of these, um, they're like 2x12-ish, 2x14s if you would. Um, so that I could clean them up to make uh, basically two by fours or inch and a half by three and a half, which is what these all here. So all these rails here that I cut to build the shop um, came out of slabs like this. Did you, I remember you guys? You remember you watched me cut those up when I built the shop. So um, I have this huge 13 foot plank left over, and I'm going to make my mantelpiece out of it. Now I want to leave the raw edge on it if I can. There's a few spots where it's chipped off. Um, so the goal is to try to get what I can out of this uh, decently, even with this knot here. I love this these knots leave nice beautiful texture. Um, you can see there's some planing and some, some belt sanding work that's going to have to be done to the surface uh, from the chainsaw marks. Um, but I love this natural curve of the raw edge here. Um, and then uh, yeah, that's what we want. So. For this video, that's what you're going to get to watch me make. I'm going to uh, chop up this plank into rough dimensions, and then I'm going to clean it up. I'm going to carpentry work it to the point where I haven't decided yet. I think I'm going to do a lap joint in the corner versus a miter um, because it'll be stronger um, for you know shelf stability, and I won't have to worry about trying to you know. Um, line dowels up or anything like that and then try to glue it or whatnot and then have it be weak. At least if I do a lap joint and glue it, I know that it will be a secure object. I can screw it from the bottom and you'll never see it. Um, and and actually, you know what I might do? Just so it's a trick cheat, I might just do a half lap. I'll show you guys how I'm going to do a half lap instead actually. So that way it still looks like a miter joint from above. But then from underneath, the, both the boards will actually, uh, for the most part, over, still overlap each other for um, joint integrity. So, stay tuned.
So right off the bat here you can see that's my line for stock removal. I've got to remove that little bit along that edge there all the way down in order to meet my wall dimensions for what I need. So instead of trying to run it on the table saw, it's such a small amount and it's on a tapered edge here. So I'm just going to uh, I'm going to hit it with my uh, draw knife a little bit to knock it down some and then I'm going to hand plane it to finish it out.
Okay, so what I did here was I, I took the time first, you saw, for me to plane this side of the board. So I got this side of the board all nice and planed out. It's not perfectly smooth yet, there's still a lot of planer marks in it. But I got it level and true, okay? I then figured out what I wanted my board thickness to be, which in this case is inch and a half, all the way down. And I set my fence at inch and a half. And then I did a rip from both ends of the board here, making sure that I kept, more importantly, this edge square to the fence this way. So I made sure that I rode the fence square this way, even on this side where it's got this little bit of undulation here, I still kept reference on the fence here. And so what this did was I was able to hog out, I don't know, I'd say maybe it looks like 70% of the total material, right? And then now I just had this little strip in the middle. So now all I have to worry about now is planing down this strip in the middle in order to meet both sides. And this is because this is the bottom and this is my live edge. And so that way I have a, a, a true thickness all the way across. Sometimes it's better to just use a chisel and hog away at a, at a knot like this when there's this much material because knots, knots do not like to plane. They do not. Okay, so seriously, that took like, uh, that took like, uh, I don't know, maybe 35 minutes to do. Um, it was a lot of wood. Even after cleaning the middle up, it was a lot of wood. But you can see now how, uh, how nice it looks. Center's gone. There's those pesky knots there. Um, now I can belt sand this and not spend an additional 800 hours belt sanding it. You can see now I got a good good true thickness all the way across so yeah that one's good So real quick, I just wanted to show everybody, before I start using it, um, this little, uh, technically it's a rabid slash cheek planer. Um, so it's just made out of pine, but it was something that I've been eating, so I went ahead and whipped it up real quick, and it just uses a chisel. So the chisel is my shaving blade. It's just got, it's ergonomic, but it's basically just so I can clean the, the uh, inside cheek up on this, uh, 
this half lap joint here. So along the half lap joint here, the inside transition here, you can see it's a little, it's a little dirty there uh, versus this clean outside. Um, I've been having to do that by hand when I built this whole shop here. I had to do all this by hand. So now I can actually come in here and uh, clean that surface up a little bit better, level this off, make sure this is nice and square to 90 for this um, half lap joint that I'm doing here. go nice clean hand cut lap joint you see it's just half and half this way I get a nice uh, clean looking you know 45 degree cut where the tape where the mantle will come around this way but I'll have good support here in the corner because the other one will sit on top of this will be the opposite of this so I'll have a clean joint but instead of having to dowel this or anything else to give this corner support this will support the other one as it sits on top and it'll have the same but opposite to where this live edge will come around this way one side done okay so here it is the stove is done I got this outside wall painted to match now too there's a project I've been working on as well and here's the top you just saw so this is the new mantle came out really nice got the live edge on it wraps all the way around we got a nice, beautiful, cleaned up knot in there to give it some character. So this has all been polyurethaned and sealed. So that's all done. All of it's been polyurethaned. Even, I even did a little under trim. See how nice it is. The uh, base, the base surround has been finished as well. So it's got a coat of poly on it fireplaces or stove it's all ready to go so this is the completeness I still have one thing to do we're gonna get it this weekend I gotta get a cover for that still but um, the one that I tried to at one point I tried to test make one and it broke on me because it was just too thin for the tools I have and um, so we found one that's a cl close finish to uh, what you see here oh and then up there on the I hate the popcorn popcorn is coming down in the future so I just ever so lightly just kind of textured it with a sponge to break up. You can see there to just kind of break it up. And then of course there's a little wood piece up there to uh, give the uh, 
box up there, the support box trim, um, a, a cohesive look between the stove pipe here and the mantle. Now, this still has to be done over here. So I still have to take all this out. This is next. I've got to finish doing the demo on this. Got the flooring in. So we got all of our flooring in to get rid of this nasty carpet in order to take care of the bald spot here and the bald spot that's going to be there where there's no carpet behind the cabinet there. And then build a wall here so that's the back side of the pantry on the kitchen side. And then That'll be it for this living room demo. So that's it for this remodel, um, this little video series on the stove. Um, I know I mentioned that I still got to take out the entertainment wall um, or walls and then rebuild the wall uh, leading into the kitchen. Um, I can honestly tell you I'm probably not going to video document that. You're not going to see it. Um, with Thanksgiving around the corner and Christmas, I'm going to be busy. So... Um, I'm really just going to try to pick at stuff while I can. Uh, my goal, though, is to get that demo done, get that part of the wall cleaned up, and then get the new wall in place and prepped and painted so I can get the baseboard in, and then start doing the floor, hopefully by, you know, post-Christmas, so New Year, January, because January is when it gets super cold around here. And I can kind of stay inside the house, uh, work on the floor, keep the you know, fire in the stove going, um, so on and so forth. Um, but because of how choppy my schedule is going to be between, well, say now and then, um, probably won't be putting out too many videos, if anything at all, in regards to the, the demo work. However, I do have plans to start showing you guys what I do as far as work. Like that little cabinet you saw there um, when I was showing the wall. It's a spice rack um, stadium style spice rack with a, a drawer in the bottom, just a little cabinet for a, a walk-in pantry. Um, that's the kind of stuff I do. I build furniture, small furniture and whatnot, and I'm going to start showing you guys some videos on how I do that stuff, um, in, in conjunction with what I'm doing here. Like, the whole reason why I built the shop, when you guys saw the videos on the shop build, um, and then, of course, you know, why my shop's laid out the way it is, even the tools that I make to make my job easier while I'm working in my shop. All of those things are geared towards the, the furniture and stuff that I make um, and the small projects. So more likely from here on out, it's kind of what I'm going to start putting out more videos on, uh, simply because that's really where I dedicate the majority of my time. Um, and then the demo work here and anything homestead-wise just kind of fills in. So um, hopefully you all appreciate it. Um, I'm not too big of a fan with what's going on on YouTube, which I'm sure all of you are aware of it now. Um, so, I mean, I'm not even trying to uh, cater to that. I'm just kind of showing people stuff that they might not know um, and maybe present an easier way to do something than you uh, may have originally thought to do it. Um, I know for me, I get a lot of inspiration from uh, YouTube myself when there's not a lot of people around to learn from. I mean, you can you can have wisdom and skill and be a master in something and still see somebody else that's either five years ahead of you in age or maybe even younger and thinks a little bit different and they might do something just a little bit different than the way you did it and you can sit back and go you know what I never thought of doing it like that it's not a bad idea however I would tweak this and in the end you end up shaving say 10 minutes off your work or being able to cut out a process that you thought was necessary that actually wasn't so that's really my goal in um, the next series of videos that I'm going to start putting out is just to kind of show um, a blend of old school and modern methods for, um, you know, building rustic looking furniture um, and hopefully, you know, stir up some, some crafty excitement within the world again to get people to start building stuff for themselves um, other than just DIY 2x4 end tables, if you know what I mean. So um, I thank you for watching the series. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it, and um, I will see you again. Thank you for watching.